next one is electric drives so electric drives there are uh, two types one is a linear actuator again you can have a rotary actuator when the stroke length is very very large in case of the linear actuator electric drives are not possible for a very short stroke length you can have a linear actuator for the electric drives for a very low cost for higher cost you are having something called as a linear motor which can generate very large amount of force but for rotary movement continuous rotary movement you are having electric actuators called as the motors so whenever we say electric the first thing that will come to mind is power sources one you can have dc other one is the ac dc means direct current the current will be constant or the voltage will be constant at a particular value it will not change in polarity throughout and when we say ac the voltage polarity is continuously changing from zero to maximum then it will come to zero and then it is going to go in the reverse polarity negative from zero to maximum again it will come to maximum to zero so it will look more or less like a sine wave the ac polarity whereas the dc it will be at a constant value so it can be any value it can be 2 volts 5 volts 6 volts any value you want it is possible to generate it in case of the ac again we are having standard voltages and by using the transformers we can increase or decrease the voltage and current based on the requirement rotation takes place based on the lorentz force and the direction of this force is given by the fleming's right hand rule so what is this lorentz force so if you are having a magnetic field in the magnetic field if you are placing a conductor which is carrying a current then because of the action of the magnetic field on the current or the electrons which are passing through it a net force is generated on the conductor now what is the direction of this particular force so that is given by the uh, fleming's uh, right hand rule so these three will be in mutually perpendicular directions that is what i can say in a simplest form these uh, three elements will be in the three mutually perpendicular directions so among the three mutually perpendicular directions one axis will be the magnetic uh, field that is the direction of the magnetic field it will be from north to south that you have to take as a direction then the current will be from positive positive to negative then whatever the third direction is there that will be the direction of the force that is acting on the conductor so the conductor will try to move now we want the continuous rotation means you have to make sure that this conductor is connected at a center point so that it can rotate about a particular point and if you are having a series of conductors then on each and every conductor the force is acting then you will be having a continuous rotation that is the basic principle of a motor basic principle of the dc motor in the dc motor we are having the commutator and you are having the uh, coils here so the commutator will continuously change the direction of the current flow through the coils why it needs to be changed we will be discussing in the coming slides in the ac what we are doing is we are giving the supply to the stator and ac current can do the induction so induction means whatever the flux is generated in the stator coil a reverse flux will be created in the rotor conductors and these two will interact and you are going to get the uh, rotation but in case of the uh, dc this is not going to happen so as the rotor is rotating we have to continuously change the direction of the current by some artificial means so you are having a commutator so commutator will be divided into two parts and these two parts will be connected to different uh, coils so that the correct polarity is present correct magnetic uh, polarity is present so that the rotation is always taking place in the same direction so this is the cross sectional view so here this will be the coil this will be the uh, soft iron uh, core so why soft iron means it is a ferromagnetic material it can generate very good magnetic field around it this is a rotor the rotor will be carrying the current so you are having magnetic field and you are ha having the current carrying conductor so because of the interaction of these two a lorentz force is created trying to rotate the conductor but the conductor is pinned about this particular central shaft there is going to be a small air gap between the rotor and the stator coils if this is very high then the magnetic flux may not be sufficient to create force on the conductor if it is too small then the frictional effects and other things will come into picture and because of high speed of rotation and because of the stresses there can be some rubbing action on here which can lead to sparks and it can lead to wear and tear so there should be a very small optimal amount of air gap between the stator and the rotor so the alignment is very important the bearings whatever you are having they should be of very good strength so that the alignment of the rotor inside the 
state are is very rigid and it can rotate at very high speed so what are the inputs to the electric motor voltage and current are the inputs to electric motor what are the output torque and speed are the output of the electric motor now if you increase the voltage if you are increasing the voltage that you are supplying the maximum speed the motor can achieve will increase so if you are supplying say 120 volts maybe the motor can rotate to a maximum speed of say 1000 rpm if you are increasing it to 240 volts then the motor can reach a maximum speed of double it maybe 2000 rpm now if you are increasing the current if you are increasing the current what happens is the force exerted that is the lorentz force created also will be increasing so the torque output of the motor also is going to increase so if you want to increase the speed range then you have to go for the increase in voltage if you want to carry more load or you want to apply more torque then you have to control the current if you are supplying more current then you will be able to generate more torque now in general if you see the speed of the motor is dependent on the construction of the motor itself that is the number of poles present inside then the configuration of the stator coils how exactly they are configured then it also dependent on the rotor coils and in case of the electric ac motor it is dependent on the supply frequency if you want very very high speed then you have to increase the frequency of the current the standard we are getting is 50 hertz if you are making it say 80 hertz or 90 hertz then it is possible to increase the speed and we can have a very very good control otherwise we have to control the speed by giving less amount of power to the ac motors so that it will rotate only at a particular speed so this is a broad classification of uh, electric motors so you are having basically first two types one is dc motor other one is the ac motor in the dc motor you can have two constructions one is permanent magnet type other one is the uh, field winding type that is the electromagnet type motor again the electromagnetic type motor you are having four main categories one is shunt wound other one is series wound next one is a compound wound motor other one is a separate wound motor then you are having the stepper motors in the stepper motors you are having permanent magnet stepper motors you are having variable reluctance stepper motors you are having the hybrid stepper motors now what is the difference here between stepper motors and the regular dc motors whenever we say stepper motor it will not operate or it will not start to rotate if you are supplying the dc voltage you have to supply the voltage in the form of pulses so it will appear more like the ac it will more or less appear like the ac but in only one positive direction so if you are applying one pulse of required voltage and current rating then the stepper motor will make one step depending on its construction it can be 1.5 degrees it can be 7.5 degrees or it may be even smaller so a fixed angle is there for that particular angle it will make one small rotation if you are sending continuous pulses then it will make continuous steps of motion in increments of those particular values and you will have the continuous rotation the regular dc motor it is not possible like that once you give the dc supply it will continuously rotate you don't require any additional thing simply it will rotate but in case of the stepper motor it will not rotate unless you are giving the pulse you have to continuously give the pulses only then the stepper motor will operate so where we use stepper motor stepper motor is used where you want the simple control for a reasonable accuracy you cannot get very high accuracy you will get some amount of accuracy because you are controlling the rotational movement you know exactly how much the motor is rotating thereby you can control the uh, motion of the uh, device or any other element but in case of dc motor it is possible to control but the controlling feature will be completely different now in case of the ac motor there are basically two types of ac motors one is single phase other one is polyphase polyphase usually the most common thing is a three phase uh, motors in single phase you are having only one supply line and one the neutral line or neutral wire you are connecting it the motor will start to rotate in three phase uh, motors you are having three supplies so if you say in terms of r y b you are having three colored wires and one will be the neutral now what is the difference of this polyphase or why it is called single phase now if you are measuring the voltage level through the three supplies that are present in the three phase line that you are getting whatever the peak voltage is achieved that will be at a different instance of time that will be at different instance of time so whatever the peak voltage you are getting that will not happen at the same time it will be happening at different instance of time in case of the three phase 
But if you are taking a single phase, there is only one supply, so it will be having a same a uh, voltage available. That is the sine wave voltage will be appearing. So there is no question of having any phase difference or having the peaks. So at a fixed interval of time, you are getting the peaks. But in case of three phase, at different instants of time, in different supplies, you are getting the peaks. That is the difference between the single phase and polyphase. Now again, in each of these, you are having two types of motors. One is the induction motor, other one is the synchronous motor. In the induction motor, you are using simple uh, rotor, which is having a conductor. Conductor means a copper or aluminum bar. Because of the mutual induction, the motor will start to rotate. In case of the synchronous motor, you are using a magnet. It can be a permanent magnet or it can be a mag electromagnet. Electromagnet means you have to supply a DC. That material will become magnetized and that will start to rotate. Now, what is the difference between synchronous and induction motor? So, synchronous motors usually cannot start on their own. That is the main problem with the synchronous motors. But induction motors, three phase can start on their own. Single phase cannot start on their own. Now, what is the advantage of synchronous motors? So, the main advantage of synchronous motors is they can rotate at the constant speed at the predetermined level. So, one single speed is their synchronous speed that is dependent on the supply frequency. At that particular speed, the motor will continuously rotate. Even though you are increasing the load or you are decreasing the load, it is not going to affect the motor. It will continue to rotate at the same speed. So, where you are using? You are using it where you want exactly one single speed requirement. You don't want to have any change of speed. In those particular applications, you are going for the synchronous motors. If you are taking the induction motors, suddenly if you are trying to apply a very large load, for a small period of time, there may be a drop in uh, speed. Immediately it will pick up. Again, it will come back to the normal speed by drawing more amount of current. So that is how the motors are going to operate. 